Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to start off a new series of videos on a computing program that you can use to teach your students coding. Now, the program I'm talking about is CodeMonkey. Now, I've partnered with CodeMonkey to bring to you a deep dive into each of their different offerings. It's also going to show you exactly what it looks like as a student, as well as what you as a teacher can do using code monkey each month we'll release a new video looking at a different level or a different part of code monkey and we're going to start with the youngest today which is our code monkey junior so you can see on the code monkey website when you go to the top where it says courses it starts with code monkey junior so let's go and have a look at code monkey junior code monkey junior has really cute little visuals it has this soundtrack sound you'll see everything in action in a minute and it teaches some very important concepts so here you can see it talks about logic loops counting direction sequencing but it also dives into some more advanced things such as conditional loops and procedures now, i've gone through the entire code monkey junior program and i'm going to show you why you as a teacher might want to consider this or you as a parent might want to consider this for your children. So let's have a look at what CodeMonkey looks like when you're logged in as a teacher. Here I am logged in as a teacher and I've already added my classroom. You can see it says the flipped classroom tutorials class. If you wanted to add your own class, you can always add a new class at the top. Now in the flipped classroom tutorial class, I have seven students. I can add these students manually or I can upload a file. Where might you do that? Well, you do that here in the Students tab. This is where I can add more students. Once your students have been added, you can then get started and track their progress. So you can see here CodeMonkey sequencing and loops. This is CodeMonkey Junior. I can see which students have been working and which students have not worked as hard as they could. Now, I can also limit the progress, which is great because CodeMonkey Junior comes with lesson plans. Here on the left hand side on the teacher resources, when you click on that, you will find all the lesson plans for CodeMonkey Junior. I'm going to click on lesson plans and I'm going to find my first lesson plan for CodeMonkey Junior. So here I can select CodeMonkey Junior sequencing and loops and here is my lesson plan. When I click on that, it is going to download this entire lesson plan for me and it gives me a full breakdown of everything I'm teaching our students. So you can see here we have all the first 10 lesson plans. It has notes, it has slides, it has all the information you as a teacher need to get started and teach this unit. So here you can see this is an example, it's an introduction to computers, you teach the students and then you also have some background information. Here you can see it talks about the, the computing evolution. It has some fun little activities. And then in lesson three, it's going to introduce the monkey. This is the monkey they will control within their environment. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like for the students. Well, here I have my student dashboard. This is what the students will see. This is Ron's dashboard. And you can see Ron has access to CodeMonkey Junior sequencing and loops. Now Ron has already completed this, but let's go and have a look at some of the challenges. Here we have our first challenge. We have to get to the chest and we can do this by either dragging and dropping this or we can simply click and it pops into the sequence bar. When you press on play, and this is really good for the younger students, you see a little arrow at the top that tells them where in the sequence they are at. This is very important, especially when you are working with very young students, young children. They sometimes get confused about which step it was where things went wrong. Seeing that little arrow move across the top really helps them to check their code and start debugging their own program. Now you can see we have three stars because we have used the correct amount of code. I'm going to go back to the overview. I'm going to show you one of the later challenges now. So for example, the challenge 10 here. Challenge 10 is a little bit more challenging when it comes to that sequencing because now they have to move left first, jump up and then go to the chest. So for example, they'll go left, jump up, then they'll go right, they'll go right three times and jump up again. When you press play, it's going to jump, move, move, move and jump 
finds that chest. Once your students have completed a number of challenges, you as a teacher get feedback on this. So here in the flipped classroom tutorials dashboard, you will see feedback on each of these challenges. Well, I can see this Hermione here. She only had a two star for challenge eight. So let's have a look at what happened there. I'm going to click on this star. And what it does is it shows me when they have attempted this challenge. And when I click on that, I can see what their attempt looked like. So here you can see Hermione moved right, right, jumped up, but then she moved right four times. One, two, three, four. So she used too much code. So what we can do here is we can then talk about, okay, well, maybe you could have removed that final instruction. Have a look in your code and let's see what CodeMonkey gave Hermione as feedback at the end of her code as well. So it's running through the program sequence and what did it say? Try shorter code. So we can now have that conversation with our students say, oh, let's have a look. I see that your program says try shorter code. Let's go through your code together. Let's see what, what can we remove? What can we remove from your sequence? So this is a great little feature that allows you as a teacher to jump in, see when they've attempted something and what their attempt looked like. Let's go back. We're going to have a look at another one. So for example, here, challenge nine, which was a loops challenge. You can see that at the top. This was another one where Hermione found it a bit tricky. So let's go in and let's see what she did. We are in the loops challenge nine. This is what was created by Hermione and then the code that she has. So we can see again, she's moving right and then the code starts running. We're going to jump move, move, jump, move, move, jump, move, move. And it's going to jump again because it runs that code. Well, we could have changed the sequence here. We could have moved this move right into our loop and just incorporate it all into a single loop. Again, this is a conversation you can have with that student. As you can see from the layout, it's very child friendly, very easy to read and see what the code does. That a CodeMonkey Junior platform has many subsections within the course. So let's have a look at the courses. Here you can see we have the sequencing and loops. This has 10 lesson plans and 30 challenges. We then have the CodeMonkey Junior advanced sequences and loops. Then we have conditional loops and finally procedures. And I really like seeing that CodeMonkey Jr. has both conditional loops and procedures because this is something that is often forgotten or overlooked, especially when you find programs that teach coding to very, very young students. The way that conditional loops and procedures are taught within this is incredibly colorful, incredibly user friendly. So let's have a look at this. I'm going to open a conditional loop challenge. So we're going to just click on the read more and play it yourself. So we can do that as a teacher. We can go in and play these ourselves as well. So here we can see this is the first challenge for a conditional loop and it makes us walk all the way up to this flower. Now it's going to do that through a loop first. There we go. And it's going to basically loop until it spots the red flower. I can then, after I've spotted the red flower, jump up. I press play. And the reason I'm getting these hints is because it's the very first challenge within this new unit of work. And there we go. The flower is that condition. So when it meets the condition of the flower, it progresses. Let's move a little bit farther and let's look at a more advanced challenge. For example, challenge 14. And here you can see we have lots of challenges. We not only are going to loop up, but we are also going to wait and find that condition there. So it's a more advanced one. Going back to the homepage, I can look at advanced conditional loops here. Let's find another one. For example, challenge 10 in the advanced loop section. Here we have two different conditionals. So let's go ahead and have a think. I want to walk all the way to the purple flower, then jump up. And then I want to walk to the next purple flower and jump forward. So I'm going to do a conditional that says walk left until you see a purple flower, then jump up. And then again, walk left until you see a purple flower and then jump forward. When I press play, that monkey will start executing this sequence. As soon as it spots the flower, 
activated little sound there to help your students understand what's happened and you have located that chest. Another one that's often very tricky to teach students is the way that procedures work. Well, CodeMonkey Jr. has found a solution to that. So here you can see the procedures unit. We have it here. The procedures unit, as I press on play it yourself, has a really neat way of introducing this. It's very original. I've not really seen this that often. So let's go ahead and select a advanced procedures example so you can see what it looks like. And here we go. So you can see the procedures at the bottom. They each have their own area to put your sequence of instructions. And the area is highlighted with a color as well as a shape so that we can be fully inclusive. Now here we can have our monkey. So brown means that he is going to jump forward and he is going to move to the right, move to the right twice. So it's going to jump, move, move. Now we're going to move on to the green. And as soon as that green is triggered, it's going to jump up and again, move twice. Then it's going to get triggered again. It's going to jump up, move twice. Then brown is triggered again. Let's check if it actually works. He's going to jump forward, move forward. He's going to bump into this and so that won't work. So we have to replace that and change the code. Let's see if it still works here. Move, jump up, move, jump up, move, move. Then green is triggered. Up, right, right, up, right, right, jump, jump, move, move. And finally, we can add in an up. Let's run this code. The first one's triggered. It's jumping, moving, moving. It's jumping. Green is triggered. So we can see now that we have some code that is not needed there. So we can just restart, remove this as it is part of this instruction already. And let's run our code again. It jumps, moves, jumps up, triggers the next procedure. That procedure runs, triggers the procedure. It runs, re-triggers a brown procedure and it completes the sequence. So this is an advanced procedures within CodeMonkey Jr. I really, really enjoyed going through CodeMonkey Jr. If you enjoyed this series, make sure to subscribe and also find the playlist because next time we're going to be looking at the next course within CodeMonkey. The next one we'll be looking at next month is the Beaver Achiever where we are starting to introduce words. So make sure you come back for that one next month. I also want to say a quick thank you to CodeMonkey for sponsoring this series of videos and giving access to their full program so I can show you what it is all about and what the backend for the teachers looks like. If you are looking for a solution for coding in your school, in your class, then CodeMonkey is definitely an option to look into. I will leave some links at the bottom that you can click on that will bring you straight to the information on their website for schools and teachers and tells you how you can get started and signed up. I also want to say a quick thank you to all our channel members and Patreon supporters. You make it possible to continue making new content each and every week. I hope you found this helpful. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.